Okay, let's look at the last section here, the application, which is how do they read CDs and DVDs and Blu-ray discs using a laser. So the first thing to understand is that most signals initially were actually done with analog, where you would be used to it sort of going like this, and you're getting a change in the voltage there to represent amplitude for sound. Change in frequency could actually be due to a closer together or further apart wave pattern, or the wavelength changing, all right? And you could actually measure this as voltage versus time. And that was called an analog signal. So if you look at old cassettes or old VHSs, the information is recorded there with magnetic tape, and it was done as an analog continuous waveform there where it continuously changed in response to a voice or a video signal, okay? Now what we want to do is do digital signals now to record our information there. And digital basically is based on either a zero or a one, all right, which is a binary digit. There are two binary digits to choose from here. You've got a zero and you've got a one. Now, binary digit gives you the word bit. Okay, you get a bit of information. So a zero or a one is one bit of information. Okay, if you get eight of those together in some sort of a code like that, you're going to get a byte of information. And so you should start to become familiar with those sort of terms of bytes and kilobytes, 1024 bytes, and so on. But for example, one byte of information might be letter A on a keyboard that you've typed in there, and that'll be transmitted as that's the information for letter A, so that's how you can send your text through. So that's the first thing to be aware of, but we're going from analog signals to digital here, or binary digits, or bits of information. So we need to somehow record these as zeros or ones. So old computers, those zeros or ones could be recorded as either an off signal in a part of the circuit, or an on signal. And they used to use valves and stuff in a huge computer room to store one computer just to do simple tasks that a little tiny calculator has been able to do for at least 30 or 40 years now. So, how do you record this onto a CD or a DVD or on a Blu-ray and then read it back? That's the key information here. What those have got on them is they'll have like a series of pits or bumps if you like. And it might be something like that. And what they're going to do is they're going to shoot lasers of light off that there. Now the laser beam they shoot onto there to read it is if it reflects off the normal surfaces here on its own, it comes back as normal and a sensor reads it and it's a normal signal. In actual fact, that's taken as a zero, but you don't need to know that. Let's call it a zero. So it's an unchanged signal, okay? It's only when you hit the edge of a pit or a bump here, like this here, that you get a change going on. Because some is going to reflect off the top here, that way, and some of that same wave enters the actual pit and reflects off the bottom. And the thing to bear in mind is that that is a quarter of a wavelength deep, those pits there, or how, how tall the bumps are. And if it's a quarter wavelength deep, the, the actual wave goes into that pit and back out again. So the path difference is a half a wavelength between that beam returning and the top one. So it's important to realise it reflects off the edge there, some reflects off the top of that bump, some goes into the pit and reflects off the bottom, okay, where the pit is. And in that case there, what will happen is this will reflect like that, and the other one will have travelled further and come out like this. So you're going to get perfect destructive interference because it's going to reflect out of phase because of some reflecting off the top and some reflecting off the bottom. Now if it's out of phase then you're going to change in the signal on your receiver there in your DVD reader there, or your Blu-ray player, and that will actually change that signal and in this case it changed it to a 1. So you're able to record a series of 0 or 1s on these pits and bumps that go on your disc. Okay, And that's the key thing to be aware of. So if you look at it, you actually get a spiral track there that actually spirals outwards with lots of pits and bumps, recording all that information. And we've been using these red ones for ages initially, which have got a fairly large wavelength. So the pits and bumps had a limit as to how close they could get and how close or how tight that spiral could get as well. So switch, switching to blue rays, you can use a blue laser there, you can use a smaller wavelength, these can be closer together here, and the spiral can also be tighter, which means you can record more bits of information. So I have put on your notes there this discussion about converting from analog signals into digital. And what they do here is they actually measure each of those analog positions there, or analog voltages, and they would convert it to a binary value. So 8 volts, for example, they have a certain value in binary numbers there. And when you do that, it's being sampled 44,100 times per second when they were just producing a CD alone. Okay? What they do is they get a strong laser and they cut those pits and bumps into a piece of plastic there to represent those zeros or ones, and then they coat it with aluminium, uh, aluminium with a label there. Now in terms of what we need to know, the first two points here, the, the, all that detail is not the part of the course that you need to know. 
The part you need to be aware of is how does the laser read the CD or the DVD or the Blu-ray. And when it does that, you've got to be aware of explaining that well, there's pits and bumps on there. Okay. If it reflects off most sections, it just comes back as a normal signal, and that represents a zero in this case. But if it hits the edge of a pit, okay, and the pits are a quarter way deep, some will come off the top of the pit, or the top of the bump if you like, some goes into there and reflects off the bottom. That gives you a path difference of half a wavelength, okay? And therefore you're going to get it coming back out of phase, destructive interference. And therefore you get a change in the signal. So that's the first thing. Can you understand how they're getting the change in the signal there based on interference and based on that path difference? The second thing to be aware of is that how do they keep it on track? Because it's easy enough that these pits are tiny, these bumps are tiny on there. And what they do is they pass the beam through a diffraction grating and so you get a first order spectrum here and it's twisted a bit so there's a leading one here and there's a trailing one, okay? And so as it goes, and so as that moves along, if for some reason one of these first order spectrum go into the corresponding bump alongside it, then you'll actually get a change in the signal on that particular sensor that keeps an eye on the tracking and it will be told to move back in the other direction, okay? So when you're doing that, a, a, um, it would normally tra trail through here, through the centre, if it's on track. But if it moves off track, in there, then it's going to get a change in the signal in the first order beam, and therefore it's going to have to be set back on track then. So that's how it keeps on track. Okay, thank you.